Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for making time today to attend my talk. So I'm going to talk about why tadpoles are better than whales. So le let's let that sink in for a, for a while. Tadpoles are better than whales. We're not saying that there's a little value in tadpoles or there's uh, a decent business to be made from tadpoles. We're saying that tadpoles are better than whales. Obviously, this isn't true for all markets. It's not true for the US. It's not true for Europe. But it's certainly true for emerging markets. So emerging markets like the Philippines were, were based. So obviously, uh, tadpoles are extremely low ARPU uh, players. They're so low ARPU that most of you probably have dismissed markets like the Philippines as simply unmonetizable. Uh, these are players that are just you know, good enough as a, as a test bed, uh, but not good enough uh, to actually generate any meaningful revenue. So just a quick background uh, of who we are. Uh, we're Surpass. We're about uh, 900 uh, employees across offices in uh, the Philippines, Singapore, uh, and Indonesia. Um, through, our, through companies we've invested in, uh, we also have a presence in the US uh, and China. Um, what's interesting about Surpass is that uh, our business is built entirely on, ta on tadpoles. It's built entirely on extremely low, uh, low ARPU players. So uh, just a little more information on who we are. So Surpass is a vertically integrated uh, games company. Uh, we make our own games. Uh, we have a company that's called Celeb. It's basically the Southeast Asia version of Glue. So uh, um, just as Glue uh, does uh, games for, the Kim, for Kim Kardashian uh, and the like, uh, so we make great games based on local celebrities. You all know Gabi uh, of Altitude Games, so we're also invested in them. Uh, we're also invested in a company called Nemesis, which is a games uh, tournament platform. So we make our own games. Uh, we advertise our games through our own ad network. So uh, we, uh, we have a 100% ownership stake in, uh, in Art of Click. Uh, the, the last point and most important one is we uh, distribute through our own app store. And that app store is called Woot. That's been absolutely critical for us because a lot of the things that you need to do to monetize tadpoles, you cannot do in Google Play. So Surpass has been in business for about 17 years. And for that entire time, we have monetized outside of Google Play. Why? Because we're in an environment with extremely harsh conditions. 95% ah, prepaid. Nobody with a credit card. Nobody with ARPU above 50 cents. So very harsh conditions. Uh, very difficult to monetize through Google Play, as most of you probably have experienced already. So we've had to build our own tools, our own app store, in order to make it work. So um, when we say extremely low ARPU players, we're talking about players that, ha that have an ARPU of 50 cents and less. So note that that's not 50 cents per transaction. That's 50 cents total spend across all our games for the entire month. Obviously, that's not, that's not a lot of uh, ARPU to work with. So in emerging markets like the Philippines, there are several reasons why tadpoles are better than whales. Uh, for one, tadpoles outnumber whales. Tadpoles out outnumber whales 200 is to one. So in the Philippines, uh, obviously everybody uses Google Play, but if you look at the number of paying players per month, it's only about 120,000. So 120,000 
paying players on Google Play versus the millions of paying players outside of Google Play. So tadpoles outnumber whales 200 is to one. The second reason is you know that everybody is already targeting whales. So for example, in the Philippines, you've got over 800,000 developers fighting over just 120,000 paying players. Obviously, a very, very crowded space. And in that space, maybe the top 20 games uh, capture about 60% of the revenue. So that doesn't really leave much for everybody else. So is it any wonder then that most, most developers aren't really any, I mean, unless you're, unless you're a supercell, most developers aren't really making much money from markets like the Philippines. So the third point is um, tadpoles are underserved. I mean, prior to today, you've probably never heard of a company that single-mindedly just targets tadpoles, never mind the whales. So th there aren't that many players in this space yet, so it's, it's a good time uh, to come in. Okay. So tadpoles, who are they? Okay. So tadpoles are uh, firstly prepaid. So in most emerging markets, uh, over 90% of people probably don't have credit cards. That means that in terms of their mobile wallet, uh, the only way uh, to monetize them is via telco airtime credits. Okay. In most of these markets, it's predominantly prepaid. Okay. So they have no postpaid bill. Uh, the, the size of their wallet is determined by how much they reload that day. So, which brings up the second point. So, tadpoles reload in sachets. So, um, they just as they don't buy shampoo by the bottle, they don't buy soap in, uh, uh, it, for a month's use, uh, they buy in sachets. So, what that means is they buy shampoo that's just good for single use. They buy soap that's just good for single use. They buy roll-on deodorant that's just good for single use. So most consumer products in emerging markets like the Philippines are packaged that way. So it's no different with uh, uh, telco uh, airtime credits. It's reloaded in sachets in very small amounts, but very frequently. So because of that, uh, tadpoles are best monetized in installments. If your IAP costs uh, $10, nobody is going to have enough money for that, at least not in one go. So over 90% of IAP purchases uh, fail because uh, the player simply has insufficient balance. So they wanted to buy something for, let's say, a dollar, but they only had 50 cents. So if you look at the funnel, it's hard enough to get someone to pay for IAP. And what this stat says is, of the, of the 3% that probably chose to go paid to, uh, to get an IAP, 90% of that fails because they, don't, they simply don't have enough money. Okay, so in order to better understand this, I'll take you through the three basic types, uh, uh, the three basic types of prepaid users. So the three basic types of consumers. So let's look at the average prepaid user. So the, the average prepaid use, user will have a monthly ARPU of uh, uh, about $2. So $2.3. That $2.3, that's not his game's ARPU. That $2.3 represents his entire wallet. So that's $2.3 that's supposed to cover everything. It's supposed to cover all his calls. It's supposed to cover all his texts. It's supposed to cover all his data. And then somewhere in there, uh, with whatever little is left, that's what you have to, that's what you're targeting for your IAP purchases. So for the average prepaid uh, user, he will have a monthly ARPU uh, of $2.3. He will reload that in sachets. 
So that $2.3 never exists in his mobile wallet at one given time. It only exists in sachets. So he will reload 38 cents at a time. Of that 38 cents, 28 cents is immediately spent on calls, on texts, on data. He'll buy some kind of, uh, some kind of package. Okay. So what that means then is, um, if you're uh, in terms of the addressable wallet size, you're actually not targeting $2.3. The wallet size is actually just 10 cents. Okay. So it's even worse for the base of the pyramid consumer. So base of the pyramid consumer, total wallet size for the entire month is $1.3. He reloads that 22 cents at a time. 17 cents is immediately spent within the first five minutes. So that just leaves a wallet size of five cents. Okay, the last is uh, the whale. Okay. So for emerging markets like the Philippines, uh, this is what a whale looks like. I mean, compared to the US and Europe, it doesn't look like much. So, the quote-unquote whale uh, will, will have a monthly ARPU of $17. He reloads that uh, uh, $2 at a time, immediately spends $1. So wallet size at any given time is $1. Okay. So if you want to effectively monetize a prepaid market, you need a strategy that engages all wallet sizes. So you need a strategy that uh, doesn't just work for whales that have $1 at any given time. It has to work for the average prepaid user that only has 10 cents. It has to work for the base of the pyramid consumer that only has 5 cents. So in the Philippines, the lowest IAP that's allowed on Google Play is, uh, is 30 cents. So um, so Google has started uh, talking about sub-dollar pricing, uh, but even with that, the lowest price point they allow is 30 cents. So at 30 cents, you can see that that's priced above what a prepaid user can afford. That's priced way above what the base of the pyramid consumer can afford. So when, when the lowest the, when the lowest possible IAP is priced beyond uh, the average person's reach, effectively then, your store is always closed. Yes, I can browse your store. Yes, I can download apps. But even if I want to, I simply cannot buy anything. So the surplus approach is always to say yes. So what we mean by that is, regardless of how uh, little money you have, if you want to buy something from us, the answer is always yes. Okay. So, we're able to do that because uh, we do what we call installment billing. So, the way it works is, regardless of how much balance you have right now, if you want to buy this IAP, the answer is yes. So you want, you want to buy something that costs $1. You only have five cents. The answer is yes. You only have 10 cents. The answer is yes. You only have two cents. The answer is yes. Even if you have literally zero balance right now, the answer is yes. So you have absolutely nothing right now. You want to buy this IAP for $1. I'll give it to you. The answer is yes. So the way we're able to do that is uh, through installment billing. So the way it works is uh, you want to buy something for $1, and you only have uh, 2 cents right now. I'm going to take your 2 cents, give you the IAP already, and then give myself the next 60 days to try to recover that balance. So 
the way it's going to look is you, you're, not, you're, you're not going to have load every single day. So Sunday you don't have load, Monday you do, so I take 20 cents. Friday I take 10 cents, Wednesday I take 10 cents. Um, I, I will take different amounts from you depending on how much you can afford at the time. And I will recover the 98 cents that you owe me over the next 60 days. Um, what happens after 60 days? So any amount that's uncollected is forgiven after 60 days. So you bought something for a dollar. I, was a, uh, I immediately got two cents from you over the next 60 days. I got to bring that up to 80 cents. So you still owe me 20. It's day 60 already. What happens to the 20 cents? The 20 cents is forgiven. So obviously, this type of approach requires uh, a paradigm shift. You will ne if you do installment billing, you will never have 100, a 100% collection rate. Okay. Over, the, over the course of a month, over the course of a year, you, you will always have uncollected debt. Uh, for surpass, that's something that uh, we've accepted because uh, our, our perspective on that is it's better to collect uh, 20 cents or 50 cents from millions of players versus collecting a dollar from just a few. So surpass has been doing installment billing since uh, 2010. Our revenues have grown exponentially since. So installment billing is a, is a capability uh, that for, for the past uh, seven years has been exclusive just to surpass. So for the past seven years, you know, we've operated a closed garden app store. So it's an app store that exists out of Google Play that only had our own games. So what we're doing now is we're opening up that capability to everyone. So we're opening it up to third-party partners. Everyone now can, can, can be enabled with installment billing. I'll talk a little about Woot. Um, so Woot is our uh, third-party Android app store. Um, it's uh, officially partnered with a local telco. So it's the official app store of Globe Telecom. Um, because it's the official app store uh, of the telco, it allows us to be integrated deeply into the telco's billing system. So uh, I know when a user reloads, I know how much he reloads, and that gives me the confidence to offer installment billing to everyone. Okay. Woot is, uh, uh, is uh, just soft launched in the Philippines. We're doing a big commercial launch uh, next month. And immediately following the Philippines, uh, we're going to take it to uh, Thailand uh, and then Indonesia. So I'd like to invite everyone, if, you, uh, if you're looking to monetize uh, in the Philippines, if you're looking to monetize uh, in Thailand and Indonesia, you might want to try us out. So we have a booth outside. You just create an account, upload a few apps, try it out, uh, and hopefully you'll be just as happy with the results uh, as Surpass has been. So our booth is just here to the right. So say hi. Uh, we're offering free popcorn, <laughs> free T-shirts. So thank you for making the time to attend my talk today. Thank you very much, uh, Cholo. Question, the 90% failure rate, is that specific for the IAPs? Yeah. Is that specific to the Philippines or it's something no, you observe no. across Southeast Asia? Uh, um, I would say that, uh, well, at, at least in all the emerging markets mm. that uh, I've worked in. So I've worked in Indonesia, I've worked in uh, Bangladesh. Um, the failure rate always ranges from a, at least 85% above. Okay. Yeah, so, um, I mean, th those are people that are willing to buy something already, and 
effectively you're saying, no, I don't want your business. Uh, I know that uh, data is a problem in um, a lot of uh, Southeast Asian countries, uh, but uh, does advertising fit into how you monetize uh, your customers at all? And, okay. and then how does that impact uh, the behavior that you've seen around buying things? Yes. Uh, so, uh, very good question. Um, so, for emerging markets like the Philippines, uh, there are two problems. The first problem I've discussed with this presentation, which is uh, monetization, payment. The other problem is access to data. So, in the Philippines, for example, uh, people have no access to data about 85% of the time. So when someone doesn't have data, meaning no mobile data, no Wi-Fi, that means that they can't access the store. They can't access Google Play. So effectively then, Google Play is close to them 85% of the time. So with Woot, uh, the way we're uh, addressing that is uh, you, don't, you don't need to pay for data when you access Woot. So Woot is completely free. It's whitelisted by the telco, um, so you can access it anytime. So it's open 24-7, 100% of the time. Um, in terms of uh, uh, how advertising fits in, so the Woot experience is uh, you can download Woot for free. You can uh, browse uh, Woot for free. You can download uh, any of the thousands of games on Woot for free. Um, the last piece is uh, for certain sponsored games, you can play the game also data free. So the entire experience is going to be free. Uh, hi, so you mentioned that um, the answer is always yes, right? When the yeah. player wants to buy something but they don't have sufficient funds. Yes. Uh, is there a limit to the number of IPs that um, a player can buy before you like, prevent them from buying anymore? Yes. Um, so thank you for that question. So um, the way we're managing that with Woot is uh, there's a credit limit. Uh, so the credit limit is uh, $20. And that $20 uh, can only be spent from one single uh, game or one single publisher. The reason for that is um, when it time, comes ta time to collect, uh, I, need to, uh, I need to have been fully paid with you first before I start collecting debt from any other publisher. So it's $20 from a single publisher at any given time. So let's say I bought something from I bought something from your game. Uh, uh, I bought twenty dollars worth of IAP. When I try to buy something from his game, the installment option will no longer be there until I've fully paid you. Uh, thanks again. Thank you very much for Thank coming you. and sharing the information with us.